Well, thank God it's Friday. Unless, of course, time is moving too fast for you and you say, Oh, God, it's Friday already. <laughs> thank you, dear. Constance is out in the, out in the garden uh, trying to salvage a few plants for uh, our impending move. But anyway, as you can see, uh, my venue here is dissolving around me, which sounds extremely mystical. <laughs> but it's, it's true for every microsecond of our existence, I guess. Anyway, uh, it's a very hectic day. And we started talking about the Goetia yesterday. And, and we'll, we'll continue probably tomorrow, too. But before we get too far uh, into uh, me reading snatches of things uh, concerning the Goetia, I just wanted to uh, uh, share with you a little, a little story about my, uh, my first Goetia key vocation and uh, how it more or less showed me I mean, it was a comedy of errors, for Christ's sake. It was, uh, uh, but it worked, okay. But anyway, it was a situation similar to the situation that I'm in right now and we're in right now, but uh, uh, even, even more desperate. And, uh, you know, I had, uh, I've been a musician for years, uh, from the time I was 14 to the time I was uh, 28. And uh, you'd think, well, a garage band and things like that. Well, when I was 14, it was a garage band, but it was a successful garage band. And it helped uh, uh, help my my family with my disabled father and and everything. So I was a professional musician and lucky enough to be uh, successful at it, even in a, in a local uh, level. Our little band pay, played all, uh, all over Nebraska and uh, Iowa and Kansas and South Dakota. So we, we were successful enough. And uh, uh, when I graduated from high school in Nebraska, uh, I did arrange to come out and and attend Orange Coast College here in uh, Costa Mesa uh, in 1966. But you got to remember what 1966 was like. It was a psychedelic explosion, and it was uh, uh, sort of a social revolution time. And I may have uh, attended college to be a drama major, but I was really attending the 60s. And uh, but still, the point I'm trying to make is, I uh, I led sort of an artist's sheltered existence. I mean, I didn't have what most people think is a real job. Okay, I played. I played in in saloons when I came out here, and uh, and I wrote uh, somewhat some of my own material. The point I'm trying to make is I was a musician, a recording artist, uh, right up until 1970, uh, 71, 72. But I needed to get out of that lifestyle. It was, it was so much fun. It was bad for my health if you get my drift. And our son was born in, in 1972, and I said, no, no, it's not the life for me. Uh, if I'm going to have this kind of a stable family, i got to get out of this. And so I did. I just sort of quit cold turkey. And uh, But that meant that I wasn't actually prepared for objective reality. <laughs> okay. And things were really tough, trying to get a enter a job market and everything else, and get a 
uh, set off on all of that. And during that time, I was also just completely enamored with the idea of magic and mysticism and occultism and things like that. And I eventually got myself uh, 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 scheduled to take initiation from uh, Grady McMurtry and Phyllis Seckler, uh, or Phyllis McMurtry at the time, uh, in 1975. Point I'm making, but we were flat broke. Flat broke. Not only that, but the few guitar lessons I was giving were uh, uh, petering out. Okay, I was really faced with a terrible, terrible uh, situation. True hunger. So I was given a list of books. Actually, uh, Helen Parsons Smith, the widow of both Wilfred Smith and uh, famous Jack Parsons, uh, sent me some, some books that were on the AA uh, recommended list. And one of those were, was The Lesser Key of Solomon. Now, you're supposed to study it, but uh, it really wasn't on the menu to actually perform it. But I read The Lesser Key of Solomon and I thought, God, if ever there was a time I needed a spirit demon to uh, uh, help me out here, it's now. And uh, so I wrote Phyllis and said, look, life is just so screwed up that uh, I... Uh, uh, I'm thinking about uh, uh, conjuring a demon to to help out my situation. And uh, she, she replied back, no. Work on getting your holy guardian angel first, then you'll find out you don't need all that stuff. Well, as the story, as the story goes, of course, I respected her opinion, but I went ahead and did it anyway. The point I'm trying to make is she was absolutely right. Now, even though the evocation just kind of blew up in my face, but in retrospect, going over my diaries, of course it worked magnificently. The object of my operation was to change my life immediately, immediately, and to turn things around. And if you've read My Life of the Spirits or any uh, other uh, essays that I've written on the subject, you, you know how that happened. There was an instantaneous uh, uh, event that seemed just absolutely unmagical, unnormal, I mean, un and very, very normal. So that was one of my first lessons, that miracles happen in the most unmiraculous way. But my point is this morning, and this is where, where I'll leave us off, Phyllis was absolutely right in that one should get one's holy guardian angel before embarking on any important magical operation. Now, does that disqualify you from practicing magic before that? Certainly not. But, if you recall, the, the basic factor in the Solomonic equation is that you first enter into the presence of deity. You first invoke so that the divine spirit, the spirit of the singularity, the spirit of God, if you want to uh, call it that, the spirit of God and you are in tune with one another so that everything you do with your magic is you're doing it as uh, a conduit of divine force, of infinite divine, divine force. Because if you're not that conduit, if you're not plugged in to the above, if you don't have your finger in the light socket of 
of the above, the current can't flow down to you. So, knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel is a level of consciousness that you hit right there in number six on the Tree of Life, which is the direct reflection of number one. So, if you get that, you don't have the magic juice unless you've got your finger plugged in. And the finger and you should be in number six in order to make that happen. Now you can make it partially happen and stuff like that and that's why phenomena takes place and that's why, you know. But to really know what is and is not in your own best interest, you need to be sort of firing on that cylinders, on the, that six cylinder cylinder in, engine of Tifereth. So Phyllis was absolutely correct in stating you should get your guardian, holy guardian angel before you uh, 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 attempt to do Goetia. But she was wrong, in my opinion. Or she got it, who knows if she was testing me or whatever, I don't know. Whatever, I wouldn't have got off my magical ass unless I did that. And the adventure that I went through in that comedy of errors that was my first evocation, that adventure that it put me on, that forced me to mutate through, turned me into the type of person that the object of my operation happens to. So... As you're making a decision, you magicians out there, as you're making a decision about whether or not you should evoke uh, a spirit of the Goetia to uh, help you with a particular situation, search your soul very hard to see if it truly is something that you want, something that you need something that you can't do without as far as the as the general health of your soul is concerned if it's something big really really big that you are convinced that you need then get out that list of 72 and see which one of those may actually be read in such a way as it provides just what you just what you want and need and if it is you've got the momentum of the entire cosmos behind you but if you're mistaken you have the momentum of the entire cosmos being poured into your mistake And that's where I'll leave you for today. And that's why it's important to connect as much as possible, to vibrate as much as possible with number six on the tree of life and have that assurance and aid of the Holy Guardian Angel. So until tomorrow, as you noticed, I've moved the camera around today because it's just, it's terrible. Anyway, I hope this played and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.